Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning. We bless you. You have been good to us. You are our stay. Expectations, many have it. But also the way to fulfilling it, we pray you show us today. So that basically everyone will realize our expectations. Lord, speak to us this morning and impact us with your word in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Fulfilling expectations. What I want to do this morning is basically show us how to secure our expectations because expectations do not fulfill itself. Do you get my point? Your desires will not come to you because you desire it. Amen? Everybody has desires, right? Everybody wants to be this or that. But they don't just happen. But I pray today you will never be stranded again in life. You are saved to be an extraordinary person. Redemption is a great privilege of destiny. We are not saved to be religious. Are you following me? We are, let me even make an outstanding statement. We are not just saved to make heaven. We are saved to live an outstanding life here on earth. A life propelled and powered by God. It's not just to make heaven. And everyone that can access the what of redemption, the values of redemption, will end up being a light to his world. And that's what Jesus said. You know, the Bible says, First John chapter 5, verse 4, Whatsoever is born of God, what happens to it? It overcomes the world. Are you born of God? You are not sure. I know I am. I said, are you born of God? If you are born of God, then you are born to overcome. As a matter of fact, the Bible says you have overcome already. He said that this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. If you are born of God, you are born an overcomer. So every obstacle before you will be turned to miracles today. My bishop will say, if you don't know where you are going, you will probably end up somewhere else. Right? If you don't know where you are going, you will end up somewhere else. So you must know where you are going. He also says, if you don't know where you are going, everywhere you get to looks like it. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, you don't know. They just say it's a big city. And big is relative. To somebody like Kachi who comes from, uh, I know the place. If he sees even this shop now, it's big. Amen? It's very big, in fact. You get my point? To another one, it's very small. So if you don't know where you are going, everywhere you get to looks like it. So you must know where you are going. You must know what you want. Expectation. Expectation is anticipation of something happening. It's a confident belief that it will happen. So you have expectation. We read, the Bible says, for surely there is an end, and your expectation shall not be cut off. So you must have expectation. Proverbs 23 verse 13. You must have expectation. My bishop would say expectation is the mother of manifestation. It begins with your expectation. Expectation is what you want to accomplish. It's what you want to go. It's your set goal. And it will also say what you don't expect, you don't deserve. You never experience. So we begin with expectation. The Bible helps us to set our expectations. And I want you to know there is more than you know. Amen? 
An expectation is what makes faith work. Hebrews 11 verse 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. That means faith is the substance of your expectation. The evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a, great, a good report. So your faith begins with your expectation. Because faith comes to fulfill or empower or give substance to your expectations. So again, what are your expectations? But for expectations to be realized, there is work to work. Amen? There are steps to take. We read from Proverbs 24 this morning, 13 and 14. He said, My son, eat thou honey, for it is good. And the honeycomb which is sweet to thy taste. He says, So shall the knowledge of wisdom be. And when you have found that knowledge... Amen? Then there shall be a reward. There is something you find before you are rewarded. And then your expectations shall not be cut off. He lays the path out for us. Amen? He is giving us a path. You go find my word. You go encounter the knowledge of my word. You go fill yourself with it. Faith rises up and faith will give substance to it. Amen. Walk in the light of it. I've told you the blessings of God are what? Rewards. The blessings of God are rewards. They don't just come. We've talked about that. And how do we fulfill expectations? Come with me to Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. He said, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. That means God is thinking of you. Amen? Aren't you glad that God is thinking of you? I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you what? An expected end. That means to give you your expectation. You must have expectation. God is thinking of you. Great thoughts. Another translation says thoughts of welfare and not disaster. To give you a future and a hope. God does not think bad thoughts about you. Amen? Another translation says thoughts of prosperity. He does not think bad thoughts about you. But he said in verse 12, Then shall ye go, sorry, Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And you will seek me. So you, you are seeing the past laid out. You pray to me, you seek me, you search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, and I will turn your captivity. Amen? You call on me. You seek me. You search for me with all your heart. So fulfilling expectation is not for the lazy. Amen? Fulfilling expectation is not for the lazy. Hallelujah. I'll be fond of you if you take these steps. I will turn your captivity if you take these steps. Amen? You shall go and you shall pray unto And you know when you pray, say, call unto me, I will answer you, and I will show you great and mighty things which you know not. Hallelujah. Amen. You pray to God. You seek after him. You call to him. And he begins to show you things. Daniel went to pray, and God came and began to show him things. Right? Nehemiah prayed, and God turned the nation over to him. Amen. Jabesh prayed and God turned his life around. He said, oh, that that would have blessed me indeed and enlarged my coast. And the Bible says, and God granted him all that he, re he required. He was a man of sorrow. So, the problems you are in is actually not the issue. There is always a way out. <laughs> Amen. There is always, what? You will not be stranded anymore. 
You saw me to find thy words, he said. I have found your word as a man that finds grace boys. When thou hast found it, then there shall be a reward. And your expectation shall not be cut off. You study to find. So that the one that instructs you and teach you the way that you will go. And I will guide you with my eyes. You study to find. Lord, open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. You study to find. Jesus said, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come and learn of me. You study to find. Amen? You study to find. God is a God of secrets. Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but the things that are revealed are for us and for our children and to as many as the Lord will God. You, you study to find. And when you find it, your story will change. Amen? You study to find. You pray with what you find. You walk with what you find. Because until you see it, it's not committed to perform it. And that leads me to the third thing. Many read, I don't want to even use the word study, but don't follow what after. And the third one is followership. Followership. You know, the first disciples that Jesus met, what did he say to them? That's the first thing he told them. Follow me and I will make you. <laughs> yeah, you get my point? Follow me and, I, and followership may be tough, but it's very simple. That means put your feet where I put mine. Do what I say. Just follow. Amen? Follow me and I will make you. That's what I want to concentrate on today. We have great destinies, but like my bishop would say, our destinies are at the mercy of our followership. Gideon said, as I do, do likewise. When you follow his guiding principles, then you are on your way out. We have that very popular scripture in Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. If thou dost shall diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do according to all that I command thee this day, right? He said, then the Lord thy God will set you up on high. If you shall diligently follow, if I put it that way. He said, and all these blessings will come. You will be blessed in the city, you will be blessed in the field. If you care to follow his instructions, then the best of life will answer for you. Follow me and I will make you. Just do what I say. Go where I said. Are you following me? It may not be fashionable. It may not be palatable. But do what I say. Mary told them, whatever it tells you to do, do what? Do it. Simply put. No one else can make you except God. Follow. Many say I believe. My bishop will also say believing is cheap. Do what he says. Or let me put it this way. Do what you say you believe. God can make you except you follow. Follow me and I will make you. Believing moves God to act. But following him compels him to perform. Follow. Hallelujah. You will never forget that miracle. They wanted wine, right? You all, all of us know the story. And he said they should fill the water pots with water. Does that make sense? <laughs> Does it make sense? No. You said you want wine. You said, okay, go and put water there. They said, this man, what, you think we are fools? They ran back to the mother. The mother said, don't worry about that. Whatever he tells you to do, you do it. And then they did it. And he said, okay, draw, go give to the governor. And wine was on the ground. Jesus is Lord. Every frustration is rooted in disobedience. So follow. And the frustrations will cease. It's not enough to know it. 
It's not even enough to believe it. It is required that you, you do it. You follow. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The scripture I mentioned before I started to preach, Psalm 63, verse 8. My soul followed hard after you. Followed hard. You know what followed hard means? That means persistently, unwavering. Persistently and unwavering. With consistency, with doggedness. My soul followed hard after you. Thy right hand opposed me. You will not fall. It's following that makes us. May make you look like a fool sometimes. But it will always answer. My soul followed hard. Following is the only proof that you believe. Many claim they believe a lot of things. But how much of those things do they do? Following. What you are yet to follow, there is no evidence that you believe it. God said, Abraham, leave your father's house. Abraham departed. To prove that he believed it. So that will make you, he followed. God said, give me your son. He carried the boy, carried knife, carried fire. He followed. Following. Are you following me? It's a proof that you believed it. Blessings don't just come. The blessings of God are rewards. Of our followership. Of our commitment. Expectations are fulfilled by following the instructions that God gives us. They are fulfilled by doing what God says to do. They are fulfilled by going the way that God has ordained for us to go. You, all of us know the story of Job. Come with me to Job 13. Look at his statement here. Job 13 verse 15. Job was in great pain. If I got to a point, the wife said, cause God and die. Forget about God. Right? So why do you speak as one of those crazy women? But I like this statement better. Job 13 verse 15. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Even so, I will defend my own ways before you. I will tell him I'm doing what you asked me to do. Are you following? Though he slay me, like I said earlier, he has not even slain you. He's only snow you saw. <laughs> eh? <laughs> only snow. You say, I, I, I can't go to church this morning. There is no. I, in Nigeria, when they when I held the churches I pastor, when it's rainy season, they say let us pray that there will not be rain for service. I always climb the stage. When I hear you know, my pastor's carry phone, I just go up. You know me, I'm not cultured that way. I just go up and collect the microphone. Rain must fall during rainy season. If rain doesn't fall during rainy season, would all of you call for emergency prayer meeting? Eh? So don't tell me if it's raining, don't come to church. Uh, let's, the rain should stop. No. Rain must fall, you must come to church. There are two different things. Rain is falling in the season. Snow is coming in the season. If you see snow in, in June, won't you say what is happening? Uh, and if there is no snow, would, uh, would Colorado almost become a desert? So everything is happening in the season. And the Bible says it's very beautiful when it happens in the season. It's the heart you set. Are you following me? It's the way you set yourself. It's the way you program yourself. Oh, I don't want to go there again. I just want to preach my message. But they go to work. Oh, is there anybody there? I would say I won't go to work tomorrow because you know America, they are very good at that. They just say don't come back. <laughs> they just say, you know, okay. You oh okay, because okay, just don't worry, don't come back. No, I don't I, set your heart. You get my point? The way you program yourself, the way you set your mind, that's the way it is. My soul followed hard. He said, Don't he slay me. Yet, will I trust him? Even so, I will defend my own ways. What it meant by that is, I will let you know, is what you say I should do that I'm doing. He also, verse 16, excuse me, he also is my salvation. For a hypocrite, did you see the word? Could not come before him. Don't be an hypocrite. 
Amen. Don't be an hypocrite. I still recognize him, he said, as my salvation, even in his pain. You know the story, right? Even with all his losses. He told all his friends, he's hard, but God showed up for him at the latter end. And Job had twice as much as he lost. Because God will always show up for those who follow. The pains may be there, the disappointments may be there, the frustrations may be there, but as you follow, are you following me? And follow him hard. Press hard. It will come forth at the later head. Your glory will show up. Some, any little thing happen, you know, the story has changed. Are you following me? But who do you run to other than God? Because it's your way out. Oh, I, I, I can't come to church today because when I woke up my back, I, I said, that's the reason you should come to church. You bring that broken back so that he can mend it for you. <laughs> Amen. If you have to carry your leg, carry it and come. Because they go from strength to strength, everyone appearing in Zion before him. Amen. Glory to God. You have not lost anything until you lose God. So do all you can to hold on. Glory to God. In his pain, Job said, Oh, that I know where I might find him. He was still looking for him. Amen. Oh, that I know where I might find him. He was still looking for him. That I might come before him to his seat to make my case. He was still looking for him. Job 23 verse 3. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come before him to his seat. I will order my curse before him and fill my mouth with argument. I want to meet him. That's all. That's why he said, You shall come unto me. You understand now? And pray unto me. I will know the words which he will answer me, verse 5, and understand what he will say unto me. Will he plead against me with his great power? No. But he will put his strength in me. You see, you get the picture? Even in your pace, you run to him for him to put his strength in you. Amen. You don't run from him. You run to him. You go to make your case with him. He said, then shall you seek me and you shall find me, right? And I will turn your captivity. You go to make your case to him. You run to him and he will put his strength in me. May the strength of God go with you today. But in knowing the way that I take, because he's the one who laid it out. And when he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Not Ethiopian gold, no, proper gold. Amen. When you go to Ethiopia, they say this one is gold from the world. This one is Ethiopian gold. What's the difference? Gold is gold. Hmm? Is it only Ethiopian gold you use? Or any gold? Amen. What's gold in America? Walk yeah. Jesus is Lord. Watch very closely, verse 10. But he knoweth the way that I take. Because he set the way, right? He set the paths. And as I walk on it, it, it means to say, I will comfort as gold. My foot has held his steps. It means despite the pains and the frustrations, I didn't deviate. It's where have I kept? Are you hearing it? In his pains. In his losses. His ways have I kept and not declined. My soul followeth what? Hard. That's what he said. My soul followeth hard. His way have I kept and have not declined from his ways. My soul followeth hard. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. You are getting me? That's how we walk with him. I have esteemed the word of his mouth more than my necessary food. That's why we walk with him. That's how we do it. And that's how he came back with double. Amen? He said, we are not of them that draws back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. 
We keep pressing. I refuse to get out of steps with him. Job saying, I followed the path he laid for me. His way have I kept and not declined. Amen. I esteem the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. That's why I say, he says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Your words were found, and I did eat them, and it became the joy and the rejoicing of my mouth. You go for light. The entrance of his word giveth light. You go for his ways. You go for his words. You are a follower. It's dope, dope. Job put out his credentials as a follower. Even in his pains. Was a follower. Your destiny is at the mercy of your followership. My bishop will say the harder you follow, the higher you fly. Glory to God. And the Bible says, Job 42 verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. And the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. You lost one, you got two. What did you lose? Nothing. You get the picture? Is that arithmetic correct? You said you lost one and he gave you two, right? So ultimately, what did you lose? Nothing. You only increase. Because with God, you only what? Increase. You will increase. I say you will increase. All the people mocking him became the people eating at his table. Your story will change. It is not the roughness of the journey. It is the destination that is the, the goal. And when you follow him, you will get there. I say you will get there. The Bible is not just for us as stories. It's a book of instructions. Whatever it tells you to do, do it. Hallelujah. Lay hold. He said, take fast hold of instruction, Proverbs, for she is thy life. Let her not go. She is your life. The instructions of the book injects life into us. Your emptiness is over. Hallelujah. Amen. Followership. Putting our steps in the way he has laid out. Followership. Followership. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I like Hosea. The book of Hosea. Chapter 3. Hosea in Amharic. Hosea. Right? Uh, Hosea. Chapter 3. Let nobody make me change my message today. Verse 1. He said, come, let us what? Return. That's, let's return to his ways. Let us return unto the Lord, for he has torn and he will heal us. He has smitten and he will bind us all. After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his side. I like verse 3. Verse 3 says, Then shall you know if you follow on to know the Lord. There's a following there. Hosea, did I say 3? 6. 6. Then shall you know if you follow on to know the Lord. For his going forth is prepared as the morning. Is that correct? No, not 6 6. I'm in verse 3. I've read my own anyway. You two should find where your own is in your Bible. Amen? Because I've, I'm, I'm reading off it from verse 1. Come and let us return unto the Lord. Right? He has torn, he will bind us up. He has broken, he will heal us. After two days, will he revive us? On the third day, he will raise us up. That's verse 2. Verse 3 says, Then shall you know. Okay, I'm correct. It's there. Then shall you know if you follow on. If you are a follower. You are you following me? 
if you are a follower because God is ready. Can I hear you say God is ready? Then shall you know if you are a follower because God's going forth is prepared. As the morning always break. Have you seen a day that the morning doesn't break? He says, so also is God prepared. But you must be a follower. Amen. So also is God prepared, but you must be a follower. He's going forth, he's prepared as the morning, and he shall come to us as the rain. You must be a follower. Amen. You must be a follower. Follow on. And the rain will fall. And you know the rain always brings refreshing. Follow on. is prepared. The latter days of Job became double of what he ever had. Because he followed. Amen. He said follow me and I will do what? I will make you. My bishop will say there is no regret in following God. Amen. Your faith will be tried. Your patience will be called into question. But as you follow hard. Follow what? Hard. What is hard in America? Hard. What is hard in America? Huh? No, you are not sure. What is hard? You are doing consultations. Eh? Is what? I don't want to. Let me finish my message. No, I'm married today. Hard. Not hard of your hard property. Hard of toughness. Eh? eh? Tell Kanu is the one beside you. If you understand it. My soul followed hard. You keep pressing until it breaks and it will break for you. Amen? You keep pressing. Because God will always show forth for those who follow. He said, that shall you know if you follow up to know the Lord for he's going forth, he's prepared as the morning. Your day is breaking already. Amen? Your day is breaking. It is said that it is darkest before dawn, Right? But it will always break. So those who know how to follow, they follow hard. They push their steps where he said. They take steps as he commands it. They, Job said, I'm looking for him wherever he is. Are you following me? I'm looking for him. I want to make my case to him. Because I've put my steps where he said I should put it. I've only followed his ways. And I've not declined. So this affliction must pass. Your afflictions have come to an end today. He said, I followed it. I have not declined. Neither have I gone back from the commandments of his lips, he said. I have esteemed his word more than my necessary food, he said. And when you do that, you break forth. You are breaking forth. Amen? You are breaking forth. Jesus is Lord. So let's press for the fulfillment of expectation. Amen? Let's press for the fulfillment of our expectation. There is always a way out in God. Hallelujah. One of the songs we sang this morning says, Don't give up on God and He won't give up on you. Right? He's happy now that I picked this song. Don't be give up on God because he won't what? Give up on you. You press. Say so we are not of them that draws back unto perdition. We are of them that believe to the saving of the soul. He that puts his hand on the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. There is more for you. You will not miss your place. Amen? This week, God will send solutions your way. I said this week, God will send proofs of his abundance your way in the name of Jesus. No matter how much it has been against, there is going to be a change. He said, I will overturn and overturn and overturn until I give it to him whose right it is. That's why we keep pressing. Amen? That's why you keep pressing. 
And as you press, it will break. This month, it will break for you. Rise up on your feet. I want you to pray to the Lord. Lord, I'm set to follow. Amen? Amen? He said, follow me and I will make you. I am a follower, not a deserter. Amen? Show me the way to go. Show me the path to follow. Show me where to put my feet. Because whatever you say, I am set to do. Let God hear your voice this morning. Let him hear the voice of your commitment this morning. Every of your obstacles are being taken out of your way today. Let God hear the voice of your commitment. Your mockers have been silenced this morning. Let God hear the voice of your commitment. Let him hear the voice of your commitment. As a follower, let him hear the voice of your commitment. As a believer, let him hear the voice of your commitment as one ready to go with him. Father, we thank you this morning. We give you praise in the name of Jesus. Lord, I decree answers for everyone here this week. I decree solutions for everyone here this week. I decree additions for everyone here this week in the name of Jesus. I command the very hand of your strength into every life here this week. In the name of Jesus, go with strength. Increase on every side. In the name of Jesus. Every form of weakness of pain or pain gives way for you this morning. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name. I say,